Well, the, well, the quickest way would just be to look at what percentage of your revenue right now is, is generated via email. Uh, even if it's, you know, if it's only 5% or it's 2% or 1% or 0%, then um, I'd say that you, you're definitely leaving some money on the table. But then, you know, to dive in deeper, what we'd really need to look at is the market that you're in and the business model and the products that you have. And I'll give you an example to sort of explain that. I spoke to a company a while ago that sells baby cribs. Now, that's all they sell. They don't sell baby clothes. They don't sell uh, anything after that. They only sell baby cribs. So when you think about how that, you know, how that customer is going to be thinking, you know, let's say if I had a baby uh, or, you know, I was married and, and, you know, we found out that my wife was pregnant, for example, uh, we would then go looking for baby cribs, I imagine, at some point, probably when it gets closer to the birth. So you probably imagine that the people who are visiting this website and looking for baby cribs, maybe signing up to their email list, are probably a few months away from from actually needing one. The thing is, is if they don't buy one, uh, if they don't buy one uh, now, or from the, you know from this guy's company, they're going to buy probably buy from another company. And then once they've bought that, or let's say they don't end up buying one, they just sort of you know maybe the baby sleeps in the bed with them. By the time they're by the time the baby's been born and you know it's been around for a while or whatever, they're not going to need a baby crib anymore. So you've got basically like a three-month, six-month, maybe a nine-month window, uh, at which point you can make these uh, sales. But after that, they don't have much opportunity to, to use email marketing. They're just because they're not selling anything else. So once that window is passed, even if it's one year, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole year, once the window is passed, it's done. They're not going to be able to sell anything more to them. So their email marketing potential is not as high as, say, a company that has been around for 10 years, has a database of 100,000 people, and can now email the crap out of that database to, to, you know, to generate sales with them. Um, you know, they have a much different opportunity because they're going to be able to make sales to customers from 10 years ago, whereas the baby group company isn't. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's definitely a variety based on industry and product and uh, I suppose the niche that you're, that you're working in. But it sounds like email is um, a massive opportunity specifically i mean for in your case when you specialize in e-commerce business but what, what what's what's different uh, about marketing for e-commerce well i mean it probably helps to kind of think you know what are you comparing it with like if you're talking to andre chaperone who does storytelling and and you know, soap opera sequences and yeah you know, that's really you know if you're trying to sell an information product you're doing a product launch that, that stuff's going to be really relevant and it works really it works really really well but if you're selling uh, headphones uh, via, you know, with Shopify or something, you're not going to be able to have like a 12 email soap opera sequence that sells people on why the headphones are good. It's just, they're just a pair of headphones. And yeah, you could, you could do a little bit of that story marketing, but it's, it's, that's not going to work as well. It's setting up the head, the way the whole business works, using emails to uh, target people based on, how they're interacting with your business. So instead of trying to tell stories and, and go really wordy, because if I'm looking for headphones, I don't really care about reading a ton of stuff about, you know, the specific elements that went into the headphones that made them really special or anything like that. I, I'm going to go look for a few recommendations and then buy one. And, uh, you know, with an e-commerce business, you, you much more, look, you know, it's much more, um, what, you, what you're really looking at a lot more is splitting, like basically finding buyer intent when someone visits the website and how they engage with it and using emails to, to capture that buyer intent. So for example, the, the classic example, you know, really easy example is cart abandonment. So someone visits the website, they add something to the cart, they go to the checkout, they start to pay, but they get distracted and they leave. You know at that point that that person's interested in making a purchase, otherwise they wouldn't have made it to the checkout, but they've left. So now you can set up your email software so that it automatically shoots them an email and says, hey, you know, we noticed you had this in your cart, but you didn't check out, you know, click here to finish before, you know, someone else gets it. And so it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot more emails like that. You know, I guess you call that, it's called life cycle marketing, basically. That's the sort of fancy term for it, which basically means you're sending emails based on the stage in the life cycle that someone's in. Uh, and then you, you can still have some, some of the storytelling stuff on the front end when someone signs up and you're nurturing them or they're a new customer and you need to indoctrinate them into the brand. But the bulk of what you're doing is going to be uh, segmenting the database and sending emails based on, you know, actions and, and, and different things that allow you to identify buyers.